Exercise is crucial following a total knee replacement to improve the mobility and strength of the tissues around the joint. In this video, we will explore what you should be doing before and after surgery. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I have some exercise advice for people with a total knee replacement. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. If you've suffered years of pain due to severe osteoarthritis of the knee joint, then it's likely at some stage you'll be able to opt for a knee replacement. These mechanical joints can provide a pain-free range of movement to allow you to carry out your day-to-day -day activities again and improve your quality of life. However, it's important that you strengthen the muscles around the affected joint as much as possible before you have the surgery, known as prehab, as well as immediately after the surgery, the rehab stage. Some people may have intermediate surgery, such as an arthroscopy, to remove bone debris in the joint and smooth the surface of the bone ends of the femur and tibia to improve function. But these procedures are becoming less common as they are only a short-term fix and could accelerate the issue in the long run. If you're due to have a half or total knee replacement, then you should be trying to do as much as you can now to strengthen the muscles around the joint to help increase your speed of recovery after surgery. Obviously, you should exercise within your limitations and pain thresholds, but carrying out exercises such as step-ups, sit-to-stands, squats, and straight leg lifts will massively improve your chances of a faster recovery from your surgery. I've done two videos recently on exercises for the knee, which you might find useful if you're suffering from arthritic knee pain and due to have surgery over the coming weeks or months. So you can click on the pop-out banner to go straight to watch one of those now, or stay with me if you've had a knee replacement already and want to know what exercises you should be doing next. The first phase is designed to allow you to recover from the surgery, but most importantly, it aims to restore a good functional range of movement in the knee. The effects from the operation will cause a buildup of scar tissue, and this can limit how much you can straighten and bend the knee. You will want to be able to get the knee to go fully straight, so zero degrees, and be able to bend it to 110 degrees of flexion, which is beyond the right angle. This will be a good functional range of movement to enable you to carry out activities of daily living without feeling restricted. Most of the progress on improving this range of movement will be made in the first four weeks, so it's crucial that you get the joint moving as much as possible, as often as possible, and as soon as possible, providing you follow the advice of your surgeon. To get the knee to straighten, start in a seated position but without slouching, placing your leg with the new knee up onto a chair or low table or stool, designated here with my red sock on. Being in an upright posture will also help to stretch the hamstring muscles on the back of the leg that may also be adding to the knee not straightening. But when you have the foot up in front of you, think about contracting the quad muscles of the front thigh to straighten the knee further. Hold it for about five to 10 seconds and then relax and repeat 10 times. If you find it hard to activate the quads sufficiently, you can place some additional gentle pressure above the knee to help try and straighten it. Then to try and get the knee to bend, make sure that your foot is on a slippery surface like a hard floor whilst wearing a sock or placing a dry towel on the floor to put your foot on. Move the foot or towel in a forwards backwards motion each time trying to bring your foot closer to you, therefore bending the knee more and more. You can even add some foot pumps while the knee is flexed to aid the bub flow around the knee. To progress this movement, lie down on your bed or sofa and using a towel to wrap around the lower leg below the knee, you can pull on the towel to close the knee joint as you bring the foot towards your bottom, further increasing the range of movement. This will feel uncomfortable, but this is generally the scar tissue being broken down and it's certainly not damaging the knee joint itself. Just don't force it too much and work within a range that feels right. In addition to these two specific exercises, 
Try to get back on your feet whenever you can to walk around and get the joint moving with some weight through it. Some people will be able to do this without an aid like a crutch or stick about two to three weeks after surgery. Do this in short bursts to limit the buildup of any fluid around the joint. And if it does swell up a bit, then lie down with your legs straight with your foot up above your hip to help drain it. To avoid any complications for your new knee, make sure that you don't twist or rotate it like crossing your legs for the first six weeks and don't kneel on it until you're given the clearance to do so by your surgeon. In the second month, you should begin to find that you have a good range of movement back for the new knee and are now ready to focus on strengthening the muscles around the joint. This will include some partial or full weight bearer movements as well as some open chain exercises that stimulate the muscles supporting the knee joint. The aim is to get the leg with the knee replacement to feel as strong as your other leg. The first exercise can work the muscles around the knee without putting any weight through it. To do this, place a cushion on your chair underneath the leg that you want to exercise to raise the foot away from the floor. Then slowly straighten out the knee whilst keeping the torso upright, aiming to get the knee as straight as possible. Hold it in that position for a few seconds and then slowly lower it back down before repeating the movement again. The weight of the lower leg will act as a resistance to the movement so you will feel the muscles working above the knee joint. But if you need to make it harder, you could place some ankle weights around your ankle if you have any, or even just place a heavy boot on the foot to make the exercise a bit harder. A great exercise that works through a good range of movement against the resistance is a stationary exercise bike. If you have access to one, then initially you may have to raise the saddle up a bit higher than you normally would do, or move it further backwards if using a recumbent bike like I am here. You will need to be able to bend your knee to at least 90 degrees though to have any success with it. And although it might feel a bit painful on the first few revolutions, it will begin to ease up and feel less restrictive once you get going. If you find yourself hip hitching while pedaling, like you're being pushed off the saddle, then your range of movement may not be ready for it yet. But the great thing about the bike is that you can control the level of resistance or pressure to suit you and gradually build it up over time. You would aim to do bouts of 10 to 20 minutes twice a day on about three or four days a week. The next one can be done at home and involves putting some weight through the knee while bending it. So place a foot on a step in front of you, make sure that you put some weight through the foot and then begin to bend the knee moving forwards and backwards to stimulate the muscles around the knee joint. Be sure to keep hold of a banister or handrail while performing this exercise and you can progress it by starting to step up onto it fully, lifting the other foot off the ground, supported by your hand, and then slowly lowering the foot back to the ground with less reliance on your hand. As a side note here, when negotiating stairs initially, think of leading up the stairs with the good leg, the one without the new knee, and then coming down leading with the bad leg, the one with the replacement. This will help you tackle stairs more effectively in the long term though, you will want to be able to walk up and down stairs unaided in a normal fashion, but this could take a number of months after you've had your surgery and it could be a good end goal for you to aim for. The final exercise is a partial squat or sit to stand movement. For this one, find a chair that's not too low or use the side of an armchair like I'm doing here. Have your feet a hips width wide and just as you begin to lean forwards and stand up, Make sure you're distributing your weight evenly between each foot, so not to use your good leg solely. If you need to use your hands to get you moving, then this is okay, but the end goal should be trying to do this completely unaided. When you can carry out this movement 10 times with ease, you can progress it by either starting in a lower seated position, bending the knees more and making the exercise harder, or you can stagger your foot placement so the foot of the good leg is moved slightly further forwards, making your weaker leg have to do more of the work when standing up and sitting back down again. When you are three months past your surgery and you feel that you're making progress, then the third phase, which will take you through to anything up to two years or what will be considered a full recovery, will consist of exercises that continue to work on mobility and strength whilst increasing your activities of daily living and getting back to the things that you enjoy. 
Obviously a mechanical knee joint has its limitations as well as a 20 year lifespan. So you probably wouldn't be advised to start skiing or take part in any extreme sports. However, many people have gone on to do many different things. So having a new knee should be a positive and should allow you to do more of what you enjoy without the pain or discomfort that you had before the surgery. Most exercises that I've done on this channel will be suitable. Some may need just adapting slightly depending on your rate of recovery, which could be decreasing the range of movement or limiting the amount of weight that you put through the joint. I'll leave some links in the description below to other videos that I've done with some suitable exercises that you can try out if you're at this final stage. I hope you can take something away from this video today. If so, please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below and share this video with friends to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.